All right, guys, let's get after it. It's time to paint a chaplain and work on some black armor. Welcome to the channel, everybody. If this is your first time here, I'm Evan, this is Origin Painting, and today I'm going to be painting up the chaplain that I converted from my last video. If you'd like to see that before we get into this, I'll put a card up above. Otherwise, I'll leave you a link down below. You can follow that after we're done. Today, it's all about painting black armor and making them look like a proper chaplain. So, here we go. Alright guys, this is the first of my grav conversions. I already have the Invader ATV set and ready to go. I gotta make a few final tweaks to that, and that'll be coming out maybe in two or three weeks. So if you want to see that one, stick around, hit that subscribe button. Going into this one, I knew I wanted a nice black gray armor. I didn't want this to push too close to my death company, because he's not really death company. He needs to stand out on his own. But the lore base for the armor is definitely black. So we're going to be going with black. You can see here I've got my Steinal Res primer down. Working in a little bit of Pro Krill, old titanium white. And we're just playing with the gradient there and trying to build the values up where I want them. Moving on from there, I really wanted to keep this guy really grounded in the Blood Angels. So I decided to make that left shoulder pad a real nice poppy red. It's really going to stand out on the model, it's going to grab some attention. But it's also covered up by that wing, so it's not too loud. That red's also going to get used on the bolters, the grips, and on his staff. The workup for that red is bold pyrrole red, mixing in orange for the highlights, and then a little bit of golden yellow later on. Let me know down below if you guys are liking these grab bike projects. I'm loving them, so I'm probably going to keep going unless people are yelling at me no. So let me know, yes, no. Should I keep pressing with them? For all my metal accents, I'm starting with a base of copper, and then I'm going to mix in silver to start doing highlights on those. This is pretty universal across my army, and that's why I'm using these certain colors. You can use anything you want for these metals. For all my browns, I'm basing it in a light umber, and honestly I'm not going to use another brown. I'm just going to tint it and shade it with white and black. That's it. The use of silver here on the grav plate in the front was really to draw your attention to it and to make it stand out. If I'd made it the same color as the rest of the bike, it would kind of get lost in that front end. Some people might not notice it, or because it's a smaller plate, it might look a lot more awkward. A lot of what I do in painting, and I'm sure a lot of other guys do, is all about just visual interest. It doesn't have to necessarily make sense, but if it looks right, then just go with it. Don't fight what it looks right. Alright, on to edge highlights. This is just my coal black and my bull titanium white mixed together. I wanted something that was bright enough to stand off against the armor, but not so poppy that it blew everything out. Also, feel free to spend way more time on your highlights than I do. My stuff's pretty rough. This is kind of the looks good at three feet on the tabletop rule, and honestly, for me that works. You can see here I'm coming back with white and doing a much more selective highlight. This is a very small portion of the overall edge highlight. It's like sunspots, um, or sunbursts coming off a car when you see chrome shining. After that, I'm going to start getting my base ready. This is some Vallejo Earth Texture. I've already got cork down on the base, and I've already got my flight stand installed. I've taped it off, just so I don't want it to get dirty. I don't want to have to clean that plastic up. A little bit of highlighting on the red here. This is very much the same as the armor, just using a shade of yellow that will stand out against the red but not going all the way to white. Then for all the jewels and the purity seals, I'm using this purple from Pearl Crew, and I'll end up just tinting that with white, eventually up to white at the very end, and that white at the very end will just be a couple dots. Usually, usually edge highlighting is what takes the longest for me, but I decided to do a freehand on here. I'm going to do a goblet for blood drinkers and put a nice little blood drop in there but it took me a long time to fiddle with these lines. The white lines kept getting away from me, getting too thick, getting too shaky, a lot of back and forth. And then I had to mirror it up and do the exact same thing on the other side. Moving on from that, I'm gonna start highlighting pretty aggressively on the light umber. I'm coming in with a tinted version of light umber. I generally just stick to my base paints. I usually have about five or six base paints. 
and then I tint and shade them with black and white. It makes painting a lot easier for me, and I feel like it makes it a lot more accessible for any of you guys that are watching. If this approach helps, let me know. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. I don't like 2030 paints, it just doesn't seem realistic. A little quick wash here, get some more definition into some of that metal. I'm not going to do an overall wash on this because I like the way it looks already, but the silvers and the golds can definitely get some help out of it. Back over to the base. And this is loosely called a dry brush. Very loosely. A lot of pigment left. I didn't want the base layer of that brown to stand out because I know I'm going to come in and wash it later. And it's going to dull everything back down. Then for the rocks, I'm just going back to my coal black full titanium white mixture. For the washes, I'm just using Agrax Earthshade for the base. And then Nuln Oil for the rocks. For my bases, I like to put down a little bit of PVA glue, and then I've got a flock mixture that I throw on there. Alright, now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and pull this thing off the painting handle. And you can see here, this is pretty cool, this is a transparent resin. It's what I use to print these grab plates, but you can still kind of see through here, even though everything else is painted. All we gotta do to fix that, slap a little bit of primer onto it, put some silver over top, match it up to the rest of that back plate and you're good to go after that it's time to unwrap the flight stand it's still nice and clear you can see a little bit of protection a little bit of planning in the beginning goes a long way put a little bit of glue on there get them positioned just so with just the appropriate amount of lean to smack some heretics in the face with that crozius and we will call this one done it's looking pretty good guys I'm really happy with how the freehand on here came out. And overall, I'm really happy with the conversion. Here's my first shot at grab plates. More to come. Hit that subscribe button to see it. And until those ones come out, I got a couple other bikes rolling off the line. John over at Blood Angels Commander has really been inspiring me to get some bikes ready. Apparently the math on these things is stupid good. If you haven't seen his channel, go over there and check it out. I've got it in my profile, I'll link it below. It's a really good place to find Blood Angels content. Tips, tactics, math hammer. I suck at math hammer. I'm glad someone like John's around to do it for me. But I feel like I've talked on long enough. So, thank you for letting me share your day. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave me a like down below. I really appreciate that. And if you know anybody else that would enjoy this, just go ahead and share it with them. Helps me out a lot. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one.